de, de Surface, que es de, de intersection, ¿no? Between a plane, y plus y equal to, and the uh, cylinder, uni, unitary circular cylinder. Okay. Uh, and we did a, what, the part of the Stuck theorem, so the line integral. Now we are doing the second part, is the surface integral, and to verify. To verify. So basically, the thing that we are doing now is the surface integral uh -huh. of the curve of the vector field that this uh -huh. so the first thing you should do is compute the curve compute the curve ah uh, yeah okay uh -huh. partial derivative with respect x Y and C. Uh, yeah, yeah, the answer is by Giraldo, but we are doing Giraldo uh, using the line integral. So I want to illustrate the surface integral. Um, I suppose that we get the same answer, right? Giraldo. Okay. Uh -huh. Because it's a stuck theorem. The stuck theorem must say this is equal to that. And we did our part, the right hand side, now the left hand side. Okay, so now it's minus y squared, x and c squared. Okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. The i part is zero. It's zero because Partial derivative z squared with respect to y is zero. Uh, partial derivative with respect to z of x is zero, is zero. Zero is i. That's zero is i. Uh, and minus j is this and this. This is partial derivative this is zero also. And partial derivative with respect to z y squared is zero. That's zero also. That's zero. Okay, no. Okay, no. Okay, no. Okay, no, because in K, we have partial derivative with respect to X of X, K1. Mm -hmm. And partial derivative with respect to 2Y is 2Y, but it's an opposite sign is plus, just a plus 2Y. Okay, because now our curve is a vector, 0, comma 0, comma 1 plus 2Y. Two wipes. This is my worker. Okay. After that, remember the surface is the is the plane. Is the plane uh, uh, encrypted inside the cylinder? Therefore, the surface is something like that. This is the surface. Let's find the unit vector a super, super uni normal vector of this surface is super super easy because because for example that uni normal vector because uh, and the equation of the plane is look here y plus c equal to it's obvious that x is missing no no x only y and c so the vector is the vector uh, zero comma one comma one uh, but this is no unit vector you divide by magnitude of the unit vector of the magnitude of the this normal vector in order to find the unit normal vector, and it's obvious that it's radical 2. Because the square root 1 plus the square root 1 
es, o sea, square root of one square plus one square. Es la de Now, this is unit vector. Ok, perfecto. So now, multiplication. Why not? You multiplication, what do you find the scalar function? You multiply curve that unit vector. Uh, it's the one way to do. No, exactly the same. No, always is the same. And when you multiply, it's easy because when you multiply, zero times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero. And the only thing is one plus two y times one is one plus two y over radical two. Uh -huh. So now, the last part is ds. Uh, ds, uh -huh. id, and that way, guy. I compute the curve. I determine the uninormal vector. I perform the double and finally ds, but ds is scalar. And ds is scalar is easy because I can use an explicit formula. Okay, look, 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 look. The plane is y plus c equal to, and uh, so you solve for z, c is equal to minus y, no? Uh -huh. So you find the partial derivative, the f, okay, this is f, f x comma y, is c. We respect the, the x is zero, because x is missing. We respect the y and negative one. Uh -huh. And remember the formula, the formula is square root, fx square plus fy square plus 1. dx dy is equal to this. Uh -huh. This is 0. This is 1. Entonces 1 plus 1 is 2. Es radical 2. dx dy. Entonces es no coincidence. Always happen. Always happen. So my, uh, my, in this case, no surface anymore. is double integral. That you transform it. The surface integral and double integral. Uh, entonces, now es, remember, es this multiplication by this. Es obvio que square root cancel out, no? And the answer is 1 plus 2y dx dy. Oh, easy, easy. And the region R, que I have no idea what is the region R. Pero remember, the region R is the projection of this surface, the yellow surface, onto the 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 x y plane uh -huh. and x y plane to say suppose i suppose like the plane the surface is a is a, is a um, piece of plane inside the cylinder the circular cylinder so that when you project it and the x y plane is obvious okay we have unicircle okay and this is my region r this region R is this region R. Uh -huh. Therefore, I suppose that the best way to compute this double integral is using polar. Uh -huh. so using the polar, we have double integral. Uh, 1 plus something. 1 plus 2 times y. But y is R sine thing. Mm -hmm. Multiplication by the Jacobian. RDR, sorry. Detail. Um, R very from 0 to 1. And theta very from 0 to 5. Okay, super. Now multiplication by R. Multiplication by R. So we have a double integral from 0 to 5. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, well, you can separate with well, you multiply, you multiply. This is r plus 2r squared sine theta d theta. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Okay. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Double integral, double, double integral. Double integral from 0 to 1 and from 0 to 5. You, the only thing I did was multiplication by R, so we have dr and d theta. So the first, uh, is the limit here, well. the first integral I am doing is the, the R part. So integration is part by R, uh, this guy is R squared, 
divided by 2 plus, this is 2 times RQV divided by 3. Don't forget sine theta. Because sine theta you consider like a constant and you evaluate between 0 and 1. Uh -huh. Entonces, one half. It's open. One half plus two thirds sine theta. Uh -huh. And evaluating zero to zero. Okay. Finally, you compute the last integral from zero to pi of one half plus two thirds sine theta d theta. Well, this is obvious. Okay, this part, the integral of this part is zero. Because the sine integrates in one entire period. It's zero, no? because sine has positive part, negative part, so it's complete this period, so it's zero. So it's stay alive only one half. So the answer is integral one half d theta evaluating between zero to pi. One half is a constant, I put outside. And integral the theta is theta, the volume between 2 pi and 0 is 2 pi. The answer again is 1. Okay, and your verification is 2 theorema in this case because the answer using the line integral and the surface integral is the same. And remember, this case is no big deal, but in other cases, it's super complicated. So you, you, you need to do the problem no in both ways, you know, in only one, the way you consider it easier. Any question? Any question? I want to hear opinion. Let me see attendance now. Wow. Uh, Brando Thomas, Leonardo Aguilar, Carlos Duque, Ane Cruz. Wow, Ane. Morning. Morning, Ane. Uh, Marco Morales, Robin Soto, uh, Fiddy Edward, uh -huh, Giraldo and Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Guys, I, today I want to send email. To explain again one concept, I explained the last class, but just in case I want to reinforce the idea. Uh, July 28th is the last day. Yes, this Wednesday. Uh -huh. uh, when I finish, I'm done. And so now, July 29th, which is uh, third day, I will grade everything. So everything is due. Let's see, you forgot something, is your problem. It's your responsibility. No? Okay, we have pending for the regular students. We have the test number four uh, on paper. Okay, by the way, some students send me right now. Uh -huh. And uh, test number four uh, online. And that's it. Uh -huh. And the final test is not mandatory. It's only for the students who need to improve. And for, in, for, unfortunately, it's due the same day. Okay? So 28 is the last day, uh -huh. 29 grade, 30, no, no class. I post it, I will post it the final grade in the Miami Day webpage. Okay, clear or confusing? Come on, answer me. Brandon is clear or confusing? Just in case I send email, because there are a lot of people absent here. Uh -huh. uh, Carlos Duque, Ana Cruz. And I could say that okay, she cannot answer me because I don't know exactly what is the problem. Marco Morales, Robin. Okay, okay, let's continue. Clear live, purify water. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the question 13. And the question 13 is applied divergence theorem. Let me recall quickly divergence. Divergy is about the one surface integral, but this surface integral is closed surface of the vector field that is. And this is the famous DS vector, no? It's a normal vector, uh -huh, the, but it's the uh, infinitesimal surface area. And this is equivalent to, sometimes it's better, sometimes no, almost when this, okay, when you have a super complicated vector field, or you have super complicated surface, they have different pieces. So if you are doing by the surface integral, this is too long. However, this is easy. See you, for example, compute, let me call, as always, the solid T. 
of the divergence of the vector field dv. Uh, and this is totally scalar. Divergence is scalar, operator, and dv. This is triple integral. So our problem right now is, in this case, I, I put intentionally, okay, we have super weird, super complicated expression for the vector field. X cubic plus tangent y c over 100. What the hell is that? y cubic minus e to the x c comma 3z minus x cubic. Complicated, right? So doing that way is crazy. It's not like crazy. So we are doing it in this way, like the right hand side. Uh, remember diverges. Diverges vector field. The formula is Px plus Qy plus Rc. Uh -huh. See my vector field. This is this is this is P expression. This is Q expression. This is R expression. You differentiate one by one separately. We respect x, y, and c respectively. And so, beyond, okay, when you differentiate p, we respect the x's, just 3x squared. Plus, when you differentiate q, we respect the y, is 3y squared. And when you differentiate, wait, wait, when you differentiate r, we respect the c, is just 3. Just three. Just three. Uh -huh. I forgot to say something important. And the surface, okay, this is important. It's important now. The surface, this surface, this surface is in our 13 problem. The solid, the solid, no. No, the surface, no. Sorry, sorry. The solid, okay. Well, okay, it's equivalent, no? It's equivalent. T, who is T? It's a solid. Who is S? The surface, because the boundary outside. The solid is a cylinder. The cylinder x squared plus y squared, less than or equal for. This is inside the cylinder, the radius 2. And C is in between 0 and 3. Uh -huh. Let me try to do a sketch of the solid and surface. A cylinder. Radio 2. So this is 2, 2. But the height is 3. The height is 3. This is C equal 3. This is C equal 0. Uh -huh. So this, the, 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 the solid T, okay, I want to apply the triple integralities. I suppose that we finish in cylindric coordinate. It's obvious, right? It's obvious. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, cylindrical now. Well, I can factor out three here in this expression. So we have x squared plus y squared plus one. Okay, nice. Wow. The weird function tangent, the weird exponential is gone. Now I need to slap this triple integral of this scalar function get the divergence. It's three. I put it three outside. Why not? Uh, X squared plus Y squared plus one dB. And the region T, which is the solid guy put in yellow color. Uh -huh, so I make a decision to do using cylindric. See, cylindric, it's obvious that this is R squared. So my, my, my triple integral is three times. Well, we have R squared plus one. Mm -hmm. so, so remember the Jacobian is R dz dr d theta. And the limit is obvious. Suppose that the first integral is dc. Go from 0 to 3. From 0 to 3. 
dr go from 0 to 2. And d theta go from 0 to 1. Uh -huh. And you compare this double integral in the story. It's doing. Uh -huh. It's three times. It's three times. Your multiplication, of course, this r and this times this. Uh -huh. Entonces, three times integral. Uh, let me separate three integral because the limit is a constant. I can do that. Uh, so we have one integral like dc, it go from 0 to 3. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that the answer for this integral is just 3. And uh, we have another integral k from 0 to pi. Uh -huh. We have the integral function depending only of the r. It's the complicated part. This is the easy part. This is the theta. It's obvious that this is 6 pi. Uh -huh. So far we have 6 pi times 3. Time from 0 to 2. And this is r cubic plus r dr. Mm -hmm. And the derivative of this guy is r to the 4 power divided by 4 plus r squared divided by 2, evaluating between 0 and 2. Okay, 2 squared to the, to the 4 power is 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Plus something, uh, 2 squared 4, 4 divided by uh, 2 is uh, 6. And the answer is 6 pi times 6 times 3. The answer is 1 or 8 pi. End of story. Super easy. Super, super, super easy. Super easy, I told you. Any question? What part confuses? you? Come on, I want to hear opinions. I suppose that you are super familiar. Uh -huh, clear. I suppose that yeah, we, we create a mechanism to see the triple integral. You select what is the most convenient uh, coordinate we use in any problem. No? Say cylinder is obviously cylindrical. Si it's a spherical, it's a, uh, si it's a sphere or cone or something like that, like a problem 14 now, it's obvious. Okay, that was problem 13, no? 13. I forgot to put the no, the no, 13. Okay, to say everything is okay? You feel good? You feel good? Okay. Moving on to the last one, case 14. Uh -huh, this is similar. The only difference is it's a sphere. Okay, so we have a vector field 14. We are back to feel. That is a clue to give me information that is no good doing by the surface integral. You know, much better doing by the triple integral. Cosine y. Oh, why the hell is that? X square y plus sine z, comma, one third. C Q V plus cosine. This is my vector field. My solid is x square plus y square plus c square less than or equal four. This is a sphere. This is the the ball, solid ball, no? And c less than or equal square root x squared plus y squared, this, this is a cone. The basically is, well, well, is the, is the, is the solid inside the sphere and below. Below because it's like that, below the cone. Let me try to represent graphically. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have the sphere, okay, the radius is two. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sphere. Uh, totally, totally. So no in the first part. No, no, no. It's completely. Oh, let me try, let me try, let me try. Let me try. Let me try to complete the circle. Okay. Not exactly. Uh -huh. And the sphere. Spheres. 
no restriction, o sea, top and bottom, full sphere. Okay. Uh -huh. And we have gone here. Well, okay. by the way, they go open up, no? It's obvious, no? They open up because it's a positive part of the square root, no? And therefore, so you open up the intersection. Well, I have no idea. Maybe it's this curve. No. However, the solid okay, we are talking about is inside the sphere, but below the cone. So basically, suppose that we have a sphere and you drill the top part of the sphere and you create one hole like a cone. So that part disappears. That part, that part is gone. Uh -huh. Does it stay? A hole here que es de con, ¿no? Es de ax. Es de ax. Son de la ta. Okay. Okay. So now I need to compute the... What I need to compute? Well, I need to compute the integral in this surface. Surface que es de totally the outer part, ¿no? However, the are connection according to the divergent theorem of the surface and solid, no? mm -hmm. triple of the solid ticket is divergent F dB. And remember, divergent is a scalar operator. O sea, divergent is an operator que working on the vector field. However, the answer que offer is a scalar function. Okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. The divergent of vector field. Remember the definition is Px plus Qy plus Rz. Uh -huh. so, uh, the derivative, this is my expression P. This is my expression Q, the second component of the vector field. And the third component of the vector field is R, PQR. Like when you differentiate, when you differentiate, P with respect to the X, uh -huh. we have with respect to the X, when uh, you differentiate P with respect to the X. Wow, something is wrong here. Ah, yeah, yeah, I copy wrong. I copy wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is no square. You see in the, uh, let me check it just in case, everything. Okay, this is the only mistake, I suppose. Uh -huh. When you differentiate uh, P with respect to X, the answer is Y squared. Uh -huh, because the derivative X with respect to X is 1, Y squared is, is considered like a constant, and this is also constant, but addition or subtraction is 0. Derivative Q with respect to Y is X squared. And derivative r with respect to the, the z, remember I apply the power rule, this three come here, three divided by three is one, and subtracting one is c, c, c squared. Okay, this is my function, scalar function. Uh -huh. Therefore, in this moment I make a decision, what is the coordinate I use to compute the triple integral? I suppose that it's spherical. It's obvious, come on, spherical. Psh. Immediately I say that it's spherical. Uh -huh. So now, see it's spherical, okay, so I set out my triple integral the, in the solid T. Uh -huh. And remember that this is my integral function. Mm, but my integral function, I cannot express it x, y, and z. I, I use the coordinate spherical que es rho, phi, and theta. No? Uh, <coughs> es obvio que this is rho, rho square. This is obvio que rho square. Remember the formulas to conversion for spherical. Uh -huh, rho is uh, rho square. It is x square plus y square. 
plus c squared, que es el radio, ¿no? Ese, ese radio, pero from the origin. No r en pola, sino rho. Entonces dice rho, rho squared. Dice rho squared. Ajá. And the Jacobian, by coincidence, es rho squared sine phi. Entonces, dice eh, rho for power sine phi. Uh -huh. And you always integrate in that, in that order, in the spherical. The rho, the phi, and the data. Uh -huh. Entonces, now, <coughs> the order of the integration in the solid is eh, rho vary from zero to two. Uh -huh. So you want to see much better. We are doing one projection. This is 3D and 2D. <coughs> I can see. This is X, this is C, maybe, 2D. This is my sphere. Mm -hmm. This is my goal. Boom, boom. Uh -huh. Of course, this part is completely open in the solid. Oh, no, no, okay. Uh -huh. Therefore, <coughs> when you integrate row, you integrate from zero to two. Get okay, that distance. Two negative. Ah, zero. Row from zero to two. Spherical. Two, 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 two. Uh, well, so um, phi is. Remember, this is my solid. Uh -huh. This is my solid. Then for phi berry. From this angle, get pi over 4, as obvious, to this angle, get pi. So that's from pi over 4 to pi. And theta, no, theta go from 0 to pi because it's a full a, a sphere, no a portion of the sphere. Okay, so this is the integral I need to do. Uh -huh. It's relatively easy, you separate in three parts. Separate in three parts, the part can go from zero to pi, the theta, because the integral function is totally separable. This part can go from pi over four to pi of the sine phi, d phi, and the part is a rho for d rho from zero to two. Uh, this is easy. This is a row phi over phi evaluating between 0 and 2. Because the by basically 32 over phi. Because 2 to the fifth power. No? This is 2 theta as always. No, no, as always, no, but frequently happen this. And this is, well, 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 until the derivative of this sign is minus cosine. And minus cosine phi evaluating between pi over 4 and pi. So minus cosine pi minus cosine pi over 4. Something like that. The negative 1 is a negative radical 2 over 2. Uh, together <coughs> is like a 1 plus radical 2 over 2. No? Or, or, so you find the common denominator is 2, 2 plus radical 2. Okay, that's what my final answer. My final answer is 2 pi. Time this number is rational. Time this number, 32 over 5. It was cancel out. Final answer is 32 pi. Parenthesis, 2 radical 2 divided by 5. Final answer. Wow. Super good. Super good. Okay. Any question, guy? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel for the test uh, on paper? How do you feel? I want to hear opinion. Feeling good. Because you are good students. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Heidi is a good. Uh, Jocelyn, opinion. David, opinion. Omar, opinion. Brando, opinion. Leonardo. No? 
You don't want to hear anything. You don't want to say anything. Okay, guys, to set out totally out the game. I, when the we when uh -huh, review has been <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. This is the intention. Oh, okay. So now I want to discuss a complete topic, totally out the course. Que es, you know, to in, in, increase or improve you know, something, your general knowledge, no, about multivariable. Uh -huh, I have a question. I have a big, a one problem that I call big picture about integral. Big picture uh -huh, about integrals. Entonces, now I try to summarize the integral that we study throughout the course uh -huh, and how we uh, change a variable. What is the tool? What are the formulas that we use to manipulate this? And um, um, let's see. I, I suppose that we see surprise. Okay, so I want to define, for example, we start, we start, we start for the double integral. Okay, double integral was the first integral we studied here. Because in Cal 1 and in Cal 2, one we study a single integral, so in one dimension. No? However, we start the complication in the double integral. So I want to explain some idea. It's important conceptual. Look, we have ambiental, ambiental dimension. What is that? In ambiental dimension, well, okay, 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 okay. We have, for example, double integral. This double integral normally the region, the region, the region, the region is 2D, two dimension, the region, no? and this region living in the two dimension ambiental. Okay, basically the double integral we are doing in three dimension. However, the, the, the idea is basically the region, the region. So when you try to compute this double integral in the region R of the scalar function, we are talking only scalar, no vectorial. Uh, eh, bueno, vectoria es en vector calculus. Okay, entonces, basically, suppose que to simplify the thing, I apply substitution, substitution. Entonces, normally, I call UB, the new variable, to perform the substitution, ¿no? Entonces, es, suppose, suppose, this is my region, look, my region, my region R, this region is this. However, to change, because I want to make easy my problem, I change variable. And so this function I call x and y, because I need to call some name. Uh -huh. And so it's, okay, the y is the first component, uh, x is the first component, y is the second component. So the new variable is, is u and b. So you transform it a little bit, this domain or this region, sorry, in another region, okay? So you are doing good, the selection of this. It's a rectangle. This is UB. Uh -huh. This is UB. Therefore, you transform this integral in another integral like that. Uh, it's double integral in the region I want to call R1. This is R1. Uh -huh. Of the same function, integral function, but now you substitution using the new variable. So it's x u comma b comma y u comma b. Uh -huh. Now the a is now the Jacobian, okay, the Jacobian, the symbolic way of the Jacobian is x comma y. Uh -huh. This is symbolic, but I want to explain Jacobian now. The UDB. Okay, this is the Jacobian part. Okay, we know by memory okay, what is the Jacobian polar, and what is the Jacobian cylindrical, what is the Jacobian in spherical. Uh -huh. So the definition for the Jacobian was in your moment, it's a determiner. 
es el determinant. UB, UB, UB. Sorry, let me clarify a little bit. Es UB. Es el determinant que en este caso es 2 by 2. 2 by 2 because they are perfect coincidence ambiental dimension and regional dimension. This is dimension. This is dimension. We are talking about always dimension. The ambiental is two, regional is two, the determinant is two by two, uh, and this is a partial derivative of the function x with respect to u, partial derivative of the function x with respect to b, partial derivative of y with respect to u, uh -huh. and partial derivative of y with respect to b. Uh -huh. So you remember something that's important. This is a crucial moment, guy. Pay attention to understand the big picture of the inter. Okay, say so one of uh, you compute this determinant. See, it's negative or positive. You you find the actual value, ABS, absolute value. Uh -huh. so this. Uh-huh. So you say, well, 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 okay, okay, uh, because the professor explained that this Jacobian uh, represents like a factor of the conversion, this area, differential, and this area. Okay, it's, well, this area is, this is x, y, no? This is dx, dy, or dy, dx, and this is uh, du, db. Uh -huh. So we have one factor, and this factor is the Jacobian. And the factor, I suppose, is positive. Uh, what, what, this was the explanation, okay, didn't, in your mind. However, when you finish that, you see, wow, a new idea behind this actual value, okay? Okay, does everyone remember very well this, no? Double there, super. Now let's move on to the triple integral. Triple, 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 triple. Finish double, now triple. And it's similar, triple integral is similar. No problem, it's easy. Triple integral, we have ambiental dimension. Ambiental dimension, and we have region dimension, no? Exactly, in this case, 3D, no? Everything is 3D, this is 3D, oh, ambiental is 3D, and the region is solid. Okay, living in this. So they are perfect coincidence in 3D, 3D. Uh -huh. Do you see one always happen? No, 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 you see that no, sometimes no. But in triple, yes. Uh -huh. so I need to compute the triple integral. And the solid T is this guy of the um, scalar function and the original x, y, and z, x, y, and z. This is my solid T. This is solid, no flat. Uh -huh. DB. Okay. Uh -huh. so, suppose that I need to make easy, remember when you are doing. The triple integral using, for example, spherical and cylindrical. Uh -huh. you, mm, you change the integral in super easy integral, get the limit is constant, and you separate. Uh -huh. this, is the, the, this is the important thing. Okay, you try to find the convenience uh, coordinate in order to, because you are doing Cartesian crazy. You have radical something, no, 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 good. However, so you are doing the best selection of the of the new coordinate. In this case, is uh, I call it UBW because it's three D. No, this is a Y uh, like a function UBW. Uh -huh. and this is C like a function UBW. One in typical example, UBW is in a spherical. In esférica es rho, phi and, and theta, ¿no? Esférica. En cilíndrica es, es z, por ejemplo, r and theta. Cilíndrica, esférica. Uh -huh. Entonces, now we, we change. So you are doing well, super well. This is my new uh, 3D space, que es UBW. Uh -huh. And I suppose que this represents like a perfect QB. Okay, because so you are doing this changing of a variable to make easy this solid 
the image of this solid now is T prime. Uh -huh. And so when you set out this integral using the new transformation, okay, this is T prime, mm -hmm. you will evaluate the function x. Bueno, x is the, the, the function, look, uh, ubw, comma, y is ubw, ubw, uh, you plug it in, plug it in the, the, the substitution into the integral function. Uh -huh. And this is the famous Jacobian, Jacobian in 3D, que es x, y, c, and uh, ubw. Mm -hmm. And this is the whatever, the U divided O, the uh -huh. uh, Jacobian by definition is the determinant again. Looks similar to this Jacobian, this Jacobian. Let me copy here. Uh -huh. Okay, is determinant. Uh -huh. And this determinant is, suppose, suppose I copy x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z. Uh, it doesn't matter, or oh, x, x, but let me try to follow in the same idea. Remember, the, the, the order of the determinant is not important because, okay, in this case, put x, 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 y, y, y. Uh -huh. You say, well, professor, but you are sometimes explain games in, in different words. Okay, uh, the transpose, so if you change row and column in one determinant, doesn't affect the answer. Okay, so say you or declare that any, any row is x, y, and z. Uh -huh. Or, in this case, I did it in that way, no? Or declare that this column is x. So say, so you change in one determinant, the row for columns, so you switching row and column, the, the result of the determinant stay the same. So now, okay, this is partial derivative with respect to u, b, and w. u, b, and w. u, b, and w. This is, this is one mnemonic easy way to remember the Jacobian uh, formula, no? Uh -huh. You put x or whatever you put aside. So you suppose that you are doing that way x, 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 y, 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 z, z, z. And it's a u, b, w, u, b, w, u, b, w. It's the same answer. Same. It's the same. This is the beauty of the linear algebra. Okay, everyone follow me so far? Everyone follow me so far? Okay. Okay, good. I do, it. Ricardo. Uh -huh. eh, well, well, well. So let's move on now to the line integral. And you see everything is, the, is similar. Of course, line integral. Eh, no vectors in a scalar. Because to make comparison, to be fair, it's much better doing like a scalar function no no so we have again the ambiental dimension ambiental ambiental dimension and we have region region uh -huh. and so we have in line integral we have two options okay 2d and 3d suppose 2d first suppose 2d this is my ambiental x y and my region now is a curve c La, living in this ambient, 2D, 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 1D, sorry, because the core is the 1D object, no? and you compute the line integral in the function x, comma y, you delay here, ds, ds is the small s, no ds, que you are familiar in the surface integral. Some people do not confuse in this, there, there are many possibilities. In physics, the professor who studied that, called DL. Uh, uh, well, we could say at length. Oh, and another possibility is some people in the surface integral call it instead of DS. To confuse, no DS, DS, 
So se put DSA, que es surface area. I don't like this way, pero ok. Ok, entonces 10. 10. I want to go 10, pero little s, no capital, super capital. Ajá, entonces, now, me dice que, bueno, me dice que, profesor, I know very well que when you solve the line theory, you parameters hecho. Ajá, pero the thing I try to explain now es que parameters hecho es exactly the same of the substitution. Es another point of view, another name, pero es the same idea. Look, we define two functions. Uh -huh. And you declare a one parameter t. Uh, and this parameter t will have one domain. And this domain, so you select well, this is a to b. So t vary from a to b. Uh -huh. And this is the, you know, this is the, the image of this curve. That is the reason that I can uh, convert, transform it, the line integral in one common integral of the cal one. Okay, so how we are doing that? Well, okay, okay, you transform it. Uh, I remember this case integral from A to B of the function. And you substitution the parametrization case I repeat again, it's substitution. It's the same idea. It's the, it's the most important thing I want to illustrate today. Coma y. Coma. Entonces now Jacobian. Brr. Pero no, I never explain Jacobian in that part. No, 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 no. I never explain. I, I explain uh, another thing. I explain this. Look, square root. Uh, derivative is square. Of course, it's a function of t. Let me, let me try to write in elegant way. It's a prime of t. A squared plus derivative y of t. Oof. A squared dt. Uh -huh. This is the formula that we use in your moment, no? However, I want to introduce a new idea. Look, you see, you see, bueno, Jacobian, 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 Jacobian x comma y, que es the original variable, and we respect the t, because in the substitution we have only one variable. Uh, and this give me, and this give me one new determinant, pero this is, determinant is no square, a rectangular, because we have different dimension, ambiental and region. So we we have a region one dimension okay, living in the ambiental two dimension. Therefore, this determinant is two by one, not two by two or three by three. And here we have partial derivative x with respect to t, partial derivative y with respect to t. Uh -huh. And so now I suppose, I suppose, I don't know if it's true or false. This is the beauty I want to prove now. Okay, this is equivalent to this. Ah, oh, professor, but this is weird because I never seen before. Compute a linear algebra, never. The professor explained me how you compute this rectangular determinant. Only the determinant is defined for a square matrix. No, it's also defined. Uh -huh. So what is the connection between this part new and the bar? Que we told before double integral and triple integral. You see in your moment, guy. Okay, this is so far is a line integral. Uh, I suppose que the ambiental is 2D and the region is 1D, no? But okay, 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 okay. Now, I suppose another possibility of the line integral que ambiental dimension is 3D. Why not? Uh -huh. We compute before that. And the region is again 1D, no? It's a curve. But this curve, this is 1D and this is 3D. In this case, this line, this curve, living in this ambient. Living in this ambient. And how does we are doing exactly the same? Suppose that you compute the line integral of the function x comma y comma c. 
Uh -huh. The DS, small DS. Uh, and we are doing substitution. And the substitution, we are doing similar. The only difference is that we have three variables. Uh -huh. So says x to the one parameter, only one parameter, only one parameter because the degree of freedom of the hour region is a, is, is a curve. So say one parameter. Uh -huh. And so say now is t and ct. Mm -hmm. And t is, you know, the domain in between a and b, exactly the same we are doing before. No problem, I understand very well. It's the same of these. Look. The only difference is that now we have three variables. Okay. So when you compute this line integral, well, you convert to the common single integral of the color one, and you define the function f, like a function of t, the function y, like a function of t, the function t, c, like a function of t, uh -huh. And the Jacobian. The Jacobian, no, but in this case, the Jacobian is the famous formula. Uh -huh. When I explain that part, I explain to say that this is the R length formula. In 2D, or now in 3D, is the, where the participation of this is x prime derivative of x with respect to the square plus uh, y prime of t square plus c prime of t squared. Mm -hmm. Okay, and does it now, wait, 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 I mean, it's okay, I understand. I did I did before like that. However, this is Jacobian also, or no? Yes, it's Jacobian, but this Jacobian, another point of view of the three variable, will respect only one substitution variable, get t, no two, only one, is determinant. But this determinant is 3 by 1. 3 by 1, it says partial derivative x with respect to d. Uh -huh. And partial derivative y with respect to d. And partial derivative z with respect to d. And this guy is exactly the same, this expression. And when, when, the, when the determinant is no square, I suppose that the partner that we can see is square root of the sum of the square each component, I suppose. Uh -huh. I want to complicate more this. Suppose now surface integral. Let me erase that part. Do you follow me? Everyone follow me, guy? Uh -huh. the, when I explain line integral, I never, I never say the word Jacobian. This is illegal. This is another thing that is in double and in triple. Inter. In line, never I talking about and surface, no, no Jacobian, only parametrization surface. Let's see what happened in double, in surface, sorry. In surface integral, uh -huh, we have again ambiental dimension. And we have richer dimension. For sure, in surface integral, always the ambiental is 3D. Three D, and the region is obvious 2D because it's surface, but not solid. Okay, surface, and this is 2D object okay, living in this ambiental. Okay, so basically we need to compute this surface integral of the one, I suppose, scalar function. Now, see, it's no scalar function, it's no problem. This is capital S, this is big X, surface integral. See, it's Victoria, when you perform dot product, something, no? and you convert to the scalar, that's it. Now, I, I uh, parametrization, I explain in your moment, parametrization, no Jacobian anymore, no, 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 no. Parametrization, our surface. In the parametrization, participate in two parameters. Uh -huh. no, no, no one parameter like in the line integral, que es, eh, because the curve is one dimension object. The region, no, the region is two dimension object. Therefore, the parametrization of the surface, we told a different example, no? 
of the parametrization. In general, we call U and B, but in practical, sometimes we call not necessarily U and B, you call, for example, R theta uh -huh, or in a spherical phi and theta. Mm -hmm. O sea, this U and B is like a generic way to call the parameters. So you, you always, if you want, you lie, you call U and B. Uh -huh. But in one particular example, it's more clear, more clear, more clear. Uh, uh, more clear call R theta or phi theta. No? Uh -huh. Entonces, now my domain of the transformation, I try to select good, y es a rectangular. Uh -huh. Entonces, this rectangular, this rectangular, is equivalent in another plane of this surface. But this is easy to integrate, so because the limit is a constant, no? Suppose, suppose. Well, no necessary like that, okay, no necessary, no always, no necessary, okay, 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 this is the well, zero to A, or no necessary, uh, uh, okay, okay, no necessary, no necessary, no necessary, no necessary, well, it could be rectangular like that, A, B, C, D. Uh -huh. So the U by variable vary from A to B, uh, B vary from C to D. Okay, now ready. You set out. You set out the the, the surface integral in the new region R prime. Okay, this is my R, my region, the original region. I use to say you set out the 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 double integral, double now in the region R one. Uh -huh. Okay, the limit is easy. A, B, C, D. So you integration in this order, D, U, D, B, no? Uh -huh. And you evaluate the function and the function X, get the parametrization. So plugging in, it's just plugging in the parametrization here into the S, U, B, U, B, comma, Y, U, B, comma, C, U, B. Uh -huh. and, and, and in this case, I, I, I compute one thing, it's a cross product, it's a magnitude R U cross R B uh -huh, uh, the U D B. Okay, this is the way I play in, in your moment, no? So now, okay, but I, I doubt, I have, should be equal the, the, the Jacobian, that part or no? Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, but so now, the Jacobian in this case gets x comma y comma z. Uh -huh. And the other variable that we are doing substitution is ub. Uh -huh. In this case, is the determinant. So this determinant is, you know, is uh, 3 by 2. Because remember, ambiental is 3, and the region is 2. Uh -huh. So, so for example, I call, I call xx, remember, xx. Y, Y, C, Z, and it's a U, B, it's a U, B, it's a U, B. Okay, and how you compute that? Well, I have no idea, but I suppose that analog to the another uh, non-square determinant, we compute this using this formula. And this formula is using intuition. I don't prove anything. Look, it's a square root of the square different guy, okay, for example, you take this determinant, uh -huh. okay, it's a square, x, u, x, b, y, u, y, b, plus another determinant, so their combination that we have, Another determinant is, for example, xu, xb, cu, cb, no? So I, I omit mentally the y part, a square, sorry. And this is, uh, I omit now mentally x part because I use x here. And here, 
Uh -huh. CU, CB squared. Okay, but this is weird, professor. I never see before that. Well, okay, you don't see before in that way. But you see before in that way, I want to explain now. Look, this is the most important moment, guy. Look, suppose, okay, well, one possibility to compute the surface integral is using the explicit form. Using the explicit. The explicit form. Explicit form. The idea is that you are doing parameterization, no? Que es, suppose que es similar to the substitution. I suppose, I suppose. I am not, I am not clear now. Because I suppose in explicit, you suppose x is x, y, y. And c is f in x, y. This is one possibility of the parameterization. Que by the way, it's not the, it's not the best way. Uh -huh. And, and, and uh, I prove in class that this is ds uh, uh, s equal money to r. Uh, well, you, I suppose that we, with this component, you define one vector value function, no? uh, x comma y, in which the first component is x, the second component is y, and the third component is f. Uh -huh. And now you you are doing the partial derivative with respect to x, uh -huh, partial derivative with respect to y. I don't want to do it again because I did your moment and cross product dx dy, and you compute this. And this magnitude is equal to square root fx squared plus fy squared plus one dx dy. Okay, this is this is you very well know. This is very well known. The new thing is try to see see this is square root. And this square root is the same or no? Well, uh, in this parameterization, in this parameterization, let me try to compute the Jacobian. Let me try to compute the Jacobian. Jacobian is Jacobian x comma y comma c with respect to the new variable okay, in this case is x or y, no? It's a coincidence again. Okay? You declare it. Uh -huh. This is not maybe in the majority of the case the best substitution in explicit does be, because if you are doing that way, maybe when you try to compute the surface integral after you need to take another uh, substitution in polar, maybe. But okay, okay, no, no problem. Let me try. So this is uh, according to the definition, look, look this is xx. Y, Y, Z, Z, and this is partial derivative X with respect to X, uh -huh, because U and B is X. Huh? And this is this is Y, this is X and Y, and this is X and Y. Okay, partial derivative X with respect to X, obviously is one. Partial derivative uh, Y, this is Y. X, Y, or X, no, X, X. Partial derivative X with respect to Y is zero. Partial derivative Y with respect to X is also zero. And partial derivative Y with respect to Y is one. And this is the function evaluating X, and this is the function evaluating Y. Wow, this looks like similar to this look. Now, if you use the formula, the formula is easy. The formula is, look, you copy the big square root, and you copy three determinants. Square, a square, and a square. Uh -huh. And the first determinant we have this one zero zero one, which is this. And the second you have one zero at okay, the first row, and the last column, which is fx, fy. Okay. And the third determinant we have again the second row. And the third row. Okay, this determinant is so big. Okay, what? This. Okay, what? This determinant is fx squared. Fy, sorry. 
and its determinant is fx squared. Wow. And we get exactly the same formula of this. O sea, que the idea that I try to illustrate today is that parametrization and substitution is the same. And when you, in one moment throughout the course, I am talking about substitution, I, I, I explain Jacobian. In one moment, because it's the history, so it was like that in the history of the mathematics. Another, another case, when you're talking about um, line integral, surface integral, we are doing parameterization. But it's the same, it's substitution, it's another kind of substitution. Que involve vector value function, okay, but it's substitution. And you can find Jacobian in different dimensions. In different dimensions, three by two, three by three. And so, bueno, professor, well, okay, okay, I understand. Okay, this is clear a little bit. But what is the reason? In the double integral, in the triple integral, integral, you never use a square root. Oh, yes, you're right. I never use a square root in the Jacobian. Uh, only I use a square root when the dimension is different, three, uh, three by two or three by one. Ah, no, no, bro. Yes, yes. And three by three or in two by two, the idea is that you have a square root, but you have only one determinant, not three. Because in this case, you select three, this combination, this combination, or this combination, no? In this case, only one, because it's exactly the number of the row equal. So I copy the determinant two by two here, in a square, exactly like the formula. And what about square root and square? Oh, it's absolute value. That is the reason that it's playing perfectly, the absolute value idea. They say at the beginning, absolute value. So you have said, no, professor, because it's a factor. No, 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 no. It's because, it's because, okay, it's because uh, it's a square root of the square that is actually by, by definition. Do you see that? Do you understand this? This is really amazing, right? Opinion, guy. Opinion of the big picture about integral. The majority of book don't touch that part in detail. Okay, I explained the, 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 the last 15 minutes. The last 15 minutes to talking about the big picture. Big picture. About the theorem. So basically, we study different theorems throughout the course. We study Stuck, we study divergence, we study fundamental theorem of line integral, and why not? In calculus one, we study fundamental theorem of calculus. So I want to, I want to create one picture to illustrate very well the position of this theorem and what is the relationship in this case. Okay, as always, we define ambiental dimension. Sure. Ambiental dimension. Ambiental dimension. Okay, we have three possibilities, no? 3D, 3D is something like that. Uh, we have 2D and 1D. But well, let me start 3D first. After, when I finish, I make a zoom out and you see everything together. Okay, so I suppose that we have a scalar function. So SF is a scalar function. Um, BF, a vector field. Okay. All right, so you compute now, for example, you compute the gradient of the one hypothetical scalar function. And you get vector field, the result vector field. And you compute the curve now, and you get another vector field. Remember, in 3D, the curve is a vector. Uh-huh, and finally, we compute divergency. And you come back again to the scalar function. This is a classical, right? Uh -huh. The new thing is 
in this direction, we have the divergent. Theorem. Let me go with the formula. Divergent theorem is say triple integral and the solid T divergent DP, divergent F. Sorry. DB is equal to the surface integral and the closed surface of the vector field that is. In that direction, is like an anti something, no? Is is like a derivative uh, anti derivative. Uh -huh. Entonces, what, what is the reason? Because we the theorem convert one integral que es double, no es double the surface, and one triple. So you see how increasing the dimension. No? And it's important to say that the dimension for the region, let me be put in blue color, the region in that part is obvio is 3D. So this T is 3D. The region T is 3D. However, the boundary, so we introduce a new idea, boundary dimension of the S is 2D. Remember, in any theorem, you see region and boundary of the region. This is a new idea. So when you study the big picture for the integral, we study ambiental and region. Now we study ambiental, region and boundary dimension. Okay, to see the big picture of this idea. Okay, now, in this direction, wood, anti-something, Anti curve is a stuk. Is a stuk. A stuk theorem. And the stuk theorem is saying that the surface integral uh -huh, of the curve of the vector field that is is equal to the line integral in the closed curve FDR. One more time, a repetition, that the formulas uh, stay relationship between one integral, that have two integral symbol, and have three. In this case, one integral symbol and two integral symbol. So like, like in that direction, increasing, increasing the number of the integral implied in the effect. Uh -huh. so in this specific case, the region the region, well, the region is 2D. Why is 2D? Because the surface and the boundary, remember in Stuck theorem, boundary is 1D because it's a curve. Let me, let me, let me repeat again. In Stuck, you have guy, remember, you have a curve, we have surface, this is the region, is the surface, and the boundary is the curve, 1D. Okay, and the divergence is solid, uh -huh. but solid is totally inside. However, the surface that enclose the solid is the boundary. Okay, uh -huh. now, in this direction, boy, what the hell is this direction? Well, in this direction is the fundamental theorem of calculus of the line integral. They state this relationship. Look, integral, the gradient of the vector field, uh -huh, that dr is equal to the potential function, uh, evaluate mb, minus the potential function evaluating A. I make a mistake here, look. This is no vector field, this is a potential function. Okay, this is a potential function, it's the same potential function. Okay, now guess the gradient is vector field. This is capital F. Okay, so in this case, the region, the region is 1D. Why 1D? Because we are doing the line integral. 
and the boundary, boundary, boundary is zero D. Why zero D? Because it's a point, A and B. Okay, basically the thing I'm doing is, we are doing this line integral, look. Okay, this is the boundary, A and B. And it's the region. The region is the line of the curve. Click on this. Okay. This is the idea in ambiental 3D. It was now ambiental 2D. XY, for example. Uh huh. So we have similar idea. We have a scalar function. Okay. We compute gradient. We get vector field. Uh, we compute the curve, similar to this. Uh -huh. Curve. But when you compute the curve, the answer is a scalar function, no vector field. Remember in 2D, the curve is a scalar function. And stop here. You stop. You ending always in a scalar function and you end in a scalar function. And to the, mm -mm, we have no too much possibility, no? And to say, when you are doing Bauer in that direction, mm, this is the Green Theorem. This is the Green Theorem. Uh, green Theorem is the, you know, the formula is uh, this double integral in the region R of the curve of f dA uh -huh, is equal to the line integral in the closed core f d dr. Uh, in this case, okay, it's different. In this case, is you know, it's a curve C. Uh, is the the region R. Uh, the region, the region is 2D. To the, look as similar to this. And the boundary is 1D because it's a curve. F 1D. Okay, super. And now let's go back. When you go back, you have again fundamental theorem of calculo, line integral, but in this case N2D. Uh -huh, it's the same formula. Uh -huh, it's Integral in the curve C, but in 2D, not in 3D. It's the same formula. I want to copy, copy and paste here. Suppose um, a, gra a gradient of the scalar function, potential function, sorry, that dr is equal, evaluate in FB minus AA, because I suppose that my vector field is conservative because confront for the computation for the gradient. Okay, so let's go to the, to the, the 1D. 1D is the last part. 1D is only one dimension, like that. Only one dimension. It's x-axis, for example, or y-axis. It doesn't matter. And you have a scalar function, and you compute something, and you get a scalar function. No vector field anymore. It's called 1. It's called 1. Uh, to say the, the, this is the gradient, but no, 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 no. In Cal 1, never I talk about gradient. I talk about derivative. So the analog idea for the gradient in one dimension is derivative. And the analog idea in this direction is the fundamental theorem of calculus, but the fundamental classical integral from A to B for the derivative of X or whatever dx is equal f and b minus f and a. Okay, so now what about the boundary? And what about the region in this case? Well, the boundary in this case is 1D. So the region, sorry, the region is 1D. The region in blue column, no, I use in blue column for the region. Region is region is 1D. How do you know the 1D? because it's one interval here. However, the boundary is zero D. Boundary is zero D because it's just one point. Remember, boundary is the limitation for the region. No? 
no sea boundary, boundary, no sea my region, que es just a segment line, is bounded by one number and another number. Uh -huh. Entonces, this is the big picture, guys, about theorem and the position in the mathematical. Super. Any question? Do you understand or no? O sea, let me, let me consolidate the idea. Eh, in the theorem, que we have several. Okay, super, super. Beautiful, beautiful. Never, nobody explained this in that way. Eh, eh, the theorem, we have different theorem, but so we study separately. Uh -huh. so well, the idea for today is integrate this information. Can you see it similar? The only thing, what is the only thing that change? I say the first time when I started the course, the, 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 the only thing that change is the dimension. When you increasing the dimension, we have new possibility, a new theorem. Suppose in 4D, we have another theorem. No, 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 this is not apply in the real life. Okay, but mathematics, yes, it's possible. Okay, so guys, Wednesday uh -huh, is the, let me start recording. Wednesday is the, is the last day.